Hey, hi everyone. I'm going to work on um, some questions from our last free response. So first question is show guys show um, the derivative is that. So we're going to implicit, uh, take the derivative of this here. So the derivative of x, let's write it y squared minus x cubed y equals to 6. So we need product rule, derivative of the front, 1, leave the back alone, um, plus derivative of the back, y prime, leave the front alone, um, then minus, we do the product rule again, uh, derivative of the front, leave the back alone, plus derivative of the back, leave the front alone, uh, and then equals to zero. Okay, and then we're solving for dy dx. So in this case, our dy dx is our y prime is our dy dx. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove, we'll get rid of this guy. And this is a negative, get rid of this guy. And we're going to keep this guy on the right. Keep, keep, so we have 2y, y prime, x minus y prime, x cubed is equal to, uh, if I move it over to 3x squared, y minus y squared. Fact out the y prime, we have 2y, x minus x cubed equals 3x squared, y minus y squared. y prime is equal to... 3x squared y minus y squared over 2y x minus x cubed. Okay. I find all the points of the curve whose x coordinate is 1 and write the equation for the tangent line at each of these points. Okay, find all the points whose curve x equals to 1. Consider the curve given by this equation, okay? So when x is 1 in the problem, so let's plug in 1. So remember our problem is x, y squared minus x cubed, y equals to 6. And if x is 1, then we end up with um, y squared minus y equals to 6. Then solve for all the possible y's. So y squared minus y minus 6 is equal to 0. Two numbers and multiply the 6 that subtract out to become 1 is 3 times 2. y, y, 3, 2, more negatives than positives equal to 0. y is equal to 3 and negative 2. So we have two points here. So our first point is x is 1, y is 3, and then our second point is x is 1, y is negative 2, and then we have our slope equation here as y prime is 3x squared y minus y squared over 2yx minus x cubed. So we're going to use this for both equations. Prime equals to 3x squared y y squared over 2yx minus x cubed. The reason why we need these uh, slopes and the point is, remember, to write our slope equation, it's y minus y1 equals to m, x minus x1. That's our tangent line equation. So we have our x and y. That's y minus 3 is equal to, oops, let's actually write it back over here on the left side. y minus 3 is equal to m, whatever that slope is, um, x minus 1. Now, if you want, you can just plug it in. You can say 3 times 1 squared times 3 minus 3 squared all over 2 times 3 times 1 minus 1 cubed. We parentheses around that. You could leave like that. That's our tangent line equation. Our second one is um, y, sorry, y plus 2 equals to 3 times 1 squared times negative 2 uh, minus negative 2 squared over 2 times negative 2 times 1 minus 1 cubed y minus 1. 
think that's our second. Those are our two tangent line equations. Our third question in here is find x coordinate of each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. Now vertical means for us it's we're dividing by zero. So we're going to take our slope, so our slope, sorry, is some number over zero. Okay, so we're going to take our number, our slope equation which was 3 y prime is equal to 3 x squared y minus y squared over 2 y x minus x cubed. And we're going to make the bottom um, y 2y x minus x cubed equal to 0 on the denominator. We can factor out an x. Let's see. I take out an x, we end up with 2y minus x squared is equal to 0. So for sure we know we have a 0, x is equal to 0, and 2y minus x squared is equal to 0. So we see this is one zero, okay? And the second one is y is equal to x squared over two. Now in our original problem, is there a point where we can, we can plug these in? So let's look at our original equation again. It's x y squared, x y squared minus x cubed y equals to 6. So that's plug in 0 here. If I plug in 0 and 0, does that equal to 6? So we know our first one does not work. Well, then let's try plugging in our second equation. Our y, if x is, we, we, we're looking, wait. So we need to plug in our y. We're given a y. That's our y is now x squared over 2 minus x cubed and x squared over 2 x squared over here equals to 6. x to the 4 plus 1 is 5 over 4 minus x to the 5th over 2 equals to 6. We can combine these. That's really 2 over 4, right? x to the 5th minus x to the 5th over 4. That's negative x to the 5th over 4 equals to 6. We'll get rid of everything. Um, x to the 5th equals to negative 24. And then we'll take the 5th root. And then so that's the x coordinate. Okay, let's look at our next problem. Nope, not that one. Let's look at the next one. Okay, f is a function for all real numbers. The point is 3 1 fourth on a graph of y is equal to f of x and the slope at each point x y is given by this differential equation so find first question a is find the second derivative sure okay so that's the derivative of whoops yeah of our first equation right we're taking the derivative of our derivative so that's the derivative of, of oops. I'm going to plug it in now. We're going to take the derivative of y squared of 6 minus 2x. Okay? So we take the derivative of this. We're going to use our product rule. So we're going to say it's going to be um, 2y and then y prime, or you can say dy over dx. Leave the back alone. And then multiply by the derivative of the front. 
So plus the derivative of the back, I'm sorry, it's going to be negative 2. And then leave the q squared alone. That's, and then we have to plug in our the derivative that's already done. Right, that goes here again. Okay, so this is equal to 2y, y squared, 6 minus 2x, times 6 minus 2x, plus, we can change it to negative 2y squared. And they want us to specifically plug in a point of 3 and 1 fourth. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it in. So at 3 and 1 fourth. Okay, so we're going to plug in our point 3 comma 1 fourth, I think. The 3 comma 1 fourth. So it's going to be 2 1 fourth. And 1 over 4 squared, 6 minus 2 times 3, and 6 minus 2 times 3. You could have wrote that as a squared also. Okay? Minus 2 times 1 over 4 squared. Okay, And that's our slope. That's our slope at that point. And then they describe it as our second derivative of y. So you don't need to do the arithmetic. Um, we could probably have simplified that out to make it a lot easier, right? This could have been 2y cubed, 6 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared, right? We could wrote that. And if x was 3, then this would cancel it out to become 0 in the front, minus 2 times 1 over 4 squared. But you could have left that as this, actually, which is fine. The second part of the question is find f of x by solving the differential equation with initial condition. So we're given our dy over dx is equal to y squared 6 minus 2x. And we're trying to go backwards to solve for what y. What is it as saying what's y, okay, with initial condition? Uh, f of 3 and 1 fourth. Okay, that's our point that they gave us. So we can see that x's and y's are on different sides. So let's move the y's over and x's dx to the other side. dy over y squared is equal to 6 minus 2x dx. Okay. And then we can go ahead and take the integral of this. So if you're a little uncomfortable with the y on the bottom, we'll put in negative 2. Integral to both sides. Integral of 6 minus 2x dx. Okay. So the power rule is n plus 1. So we go plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1, right? That's our power rule. That's going to be y to the negative 1 over negative 1 is equal to 6x minus 2x squared over 2 plus c. You can simplify this if you want to be negative y. 1 over y is equal to 6x minus x squared plus c. We're given our initial condition uh, that our, if x is 3, 6 times 3 minus 3 squared plus c is equal to 1 over 1 fourth. That's reciprocal, so negative 4 is equal to 18 minus 9 plus c. Uh, 18 minus 9 is 9, plus c. Uh, if I move it over, it's negative 13 is equal to c. Rewriting this as let's see, I can plug it in here. Um, negative 1 over y is equal to 6x minus x squared minus 13. And then um, we can move the negative and flip everything over. So y is equal to 1 over x squared minus 6x plus 13. Okay, 
That's it. Let's go ahead and do the last problem. Okay, related rates. Okay, so for t is greater than zero, let r of t, the rate is um, 120, one minus e to the negative 10t squared. And this is our speed in kilometers, kilometers per hour. And of course, this is our particle, so we're moving on a straight line. The number of liters of gasoline used by the car traveled x kilometers is modeled by, so this is the how much gas is used. So gasoline uh, based on x is 0 0.05 x to the no, times 1 minus e to the negative x over 2. Okay, so we have two different equations referring to different things. How many kilometers does a car travel in the first two hours? So we're looking at how many kilometers, that's the distance in the first two hours. So since we have a rate, we can figure out how far it traveled in the first two hours. So the integral from zero to two. So our distance is equal to the integral of our, our speed here. Let's say it's 120, one minus e to the negative 10 t squared. And since this is a calculator problem, dt, we can plug that in the calculator and it should give us some like 206.370. Okay, setting up the integral, this is probably easy, this is two points. Now the second part of it, find the rate at which respect to time, the number of gallons of gasoline used by the car when two hours indicate them units of measure. So they ask us to find the rate of change with respect to time. So we want to say gasoline um, over time, right? But if you look here, this is gallons per mi uh, kilo kil kilometer. That's, a, that's right, gallons per kilometer. Yes. So, so we need gallons per hour. So how do we get that? Well. We're just going to multiply it, okay? So we want to get, if you look at these words, gallons per kilometer, and we want to get, if I multiply that by kilometers per hour, that gives us gallons per hour. So we would multiply them together. So let's see, we have just the rate in time. So we know our, let's see, we know, we have everything we need at two hours, so at t is equal to 2, whoops, 2, we're going to plug in our, our values here. We're going to point be 0 0.05x. What is our x value at 2? 1 minus e to the negative um, x over 2. We know the distance travel is 206.370. 206.370. Our kilometers per hour, we're going to multiply that by our rate, 1, 120 times 1 minus e to the negative 10 to the t, which is a 2. Yep. And then we're done. You can leave it like that. It looks like if you, if we do plug in um, our numbers, we should end up with less than like 6 liters per hour. And the reason why this is a rate, and this is a rate, and we're just multiplying our rates together. Okay, so
so we just plugged in our t is 2 and our sorry our x is 206 and our t is 2 here okay how many liters of gasoline um, have been used by the car when it reaches 80 kilometers per hour okay how many gallons of gasoline have been used when the car reaches 80 kilometers per hour How many liters of gasoline? So gasoline is this equation right here. That's our gasoline equation. When you have reached the speed of 80 kilometers. So to get to 80 kilometers, we need to make this equation here become 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, once we find out the t value we can figure out the distance it took us we can plug our distance into our gasoline equation and then we're good to go okay, let's just try that so using your graphing calculator we're going to um and we could try using a solver here but i think that might be easiest for us to just graph this equation so let's use decimals here we're not supposed to use decimals for the AP exam, but um, I don't have a graphic calculator on my tablet, so let's just go ahead and write 120. Open parentheses, 1 minus e to the exponent negative. 10 t squared okay that's my graph double checking okay now this looks kind of crazy to look at um one twenty oh we should flatline it Set this to become zero to let's say let's do ninety, right? Because you are trying to get to ninety. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw another one that says eighty. Y is equal to eighty. Okay, and then we're gonna see where they meet. They meet at point. Three. So the time it takes me to get to this 80 kilometers per hour is 0. 0.3318. Okay, so how far? In order to get our gasoline take, we need to change that to x value. So the integral from 0 to 0. 0.3318 of r of t dt. Okay, when we plug that in, we should end up with something like, on your calculator, 10.794097. Now that we know our x value, we can plug this x value into our gasoline equation. 10.794097. And that should give us something like 0.537 liters.